So next up, we've got um, another panel. Um, I can see Aristide at the back there. So um, if I can invite Aristide in the panel up onto stage. Mm -hmm. um, and whilst, whilst he's coming up, just check we've got enough chairs. Fantastic. So our next panel is going to be talking about um, African financial institutions ratings. Promote, are they promoting or discouraging international investment? So do come up, take your seats. Welcome. Fantastic. Thank you. So our moderator for this panel is um, Aristide Otara, who is the risk advisor and financial industry leader um, at Deloitte Afrique. Um, he's a leading partner, in fact, of the, the risk advisory business line and also leads the financial industry line. So he's a real specialist in the financial industry, um, the, the African banking and fintech landscape. Um, Aristide has got a wide experience in assisting African financial institutions in their transformation, notably by using risk management as a driver for sustainable growth. Mr. He's moderating this next, pa next panel this morning who are discussing African in financial institutional ratings. So looking forward to see the impact of that and hearing from you. Thank you, Aristide. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm particularly happy to... Uh, uh, to moderate this uh, exceptional panel. Um, we, um, uh, you know, the ratings are very key important uh, information that is useful for a company, especially for uh, the different partners, even commercial, technical, but uh, the, the, the financial uh, investor. And uh, what we want to address today is to know whether the ratings of financial, African financial institution are injuring or promoting uh, the, the, the investment. So quite a provocating question, but we, very interesting to, uh, uh, to address that. And uh, in order to, uh, uh, to talk about that, we have a unique privilege to have uh, in the same panel inter an international, um, two international uh, rating agencies, Moody's and, 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 and Fitch. We also have the opportunity, even if he's not physically present, to have Stan, uh, Stanislas Zezé, uh, who is not here, but he sent some insights, so I will comment that, so from Bloomfield. We also have an investor uh, from, um, uh, uh, from AFIP, so I will present him uh, today, and also um, uh, an, a financial institution, an African financial institution. So I will start uh, by presenting um, Mahin. Mahin uh, uh, Dissanaik uh, is a director in the EMEA Financial Institution Group uh, in Fitch uh, rating. Uh, he is responsible for banks in Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East. And Mahin was previously seconded to Fitch Dubai from 2009 to 2002 as country director for banks in Oman uh, and Qatar, right? And we will also have David Aldrich, uh, Managing Part Director um, of Emerging Market Global Sovereign and sub, uh, Supranational at Moody's Investor Services. Uh, David has a long experience in capital market before joining Moody's, and now uh, you, you joined Moody's since uh, 2013 as commercial leader. Uh, we have William uh, Teipana. William is co-founder of AFIP, Africa Financial Institution Investment Firm. A platform, sorry, and this platform is just uh, created. Uh, you will start your activity uh, this year, and uh, your objective is to become a, a, a premier investment platform solely dedicated to uh, uh, the investment in financial institution across in Africa across asset classes such as debt, NPL, and a special situation. Your business model is to to raise fund here from um, European investor to uh, to invest in uh, African debt, and we have Olivier. Uh, Olivier is the CEO of Africa League Capital Titrization. Uh, Olivier is still um, also a pioneer in his domain because it's uh, one of the leading uh, securitization firm uh, in West West Africa, and um, Olivier is worked for Africa League Capital since since 2008. Yes. And he's not present, but we also have Stan uh, Sanislas Zeze. Sanislas Zeze is the founder of Bloomfield. Bloomfield is uh, uh, the first uh, um, 
rating agencies um, uh, in, in Africa that we, has, has been found since also 2017. So uh, we will try to cover different questions uh, during this panel. The first one is uh, to, um, uh, we, we have very few um, number of African financial institutions that have um, a international rating, okay? So David, for you, what is the reason of this situation? Well, I think, first of all, when, when we discuss this type of metrics around Africa, we have to be a little bit careful uh, not to, to focus on the negative, but maybe to focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the top 25 financial uh, institutions um, in the banking space in Africa, all but two of them are actually rated by at least one of mm. the international rating agencies. Uh, and I think this number 14, number 15 in the top 25 are <laughs> uh, not rated yet. Mm. Um, so that's pretty good coverage. Um, uh, of course, uh, I think we all think it should be 100%, not uh, you know, 90%. But it's not too bad. Mm. I, I, when you compare that with the corporate space, uh, there's a much bigger mm. gap uh, because uh, if you look at the McKinsey study they published in 2018, where they identified 400 financial institutions um, with revenues, uh, sorry, not financial, sorry, entities, Co companies, Co companies um, mm. uh, with the revenues over a billion dollars in Africa. Um, if you looked at how many of those are, are, are rated, it's, it's a very small number, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a much, much smaller percentage. So I think we have a challenge more in the corporate space than we do in the financial institution space where there's a natural uh, tendency for people to get ratings. Nonetheless, um, why, uh, why are people not taking it? And I can tell you, as I, I'm, a, I'm not an analyst, uh, I'm a commercial person, so I'm not going to answer any questions about rating levels and so on. Um, I'll leave that to Martin to, uh, to address uh, those things. But what I will say is that, of course, in general, um, uh, it's, it, the, the, the sovereign ratings are relatively low in Africa compared to other countries, and that does influence people's demand uh, for ratings, because mm -hmm. they, I, on, on a panel yesterday, uh, somebody who, uh, who I won't name uh, meant, used the word bad ratings, the expression bad ratings. <laughs> now, you know, I, it, 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 don't point at yourself with me, it's fine, it's okay. But, <laughs> yeah, well, look very good. I, <laughs> there's no such thing as a bad rating, right? I mean, there are low ratings and there are high ratings. Um, but we can debate this, but, but, but you know, so I think that, uh, that people have a perception of rating level, mm -hmm. and if it's low rating level, they don't want to get it. But they're missing the point, right? Mm. The point is, we're, we're getting a rating. You're, you're, you're showing transparency, mm -hmm. corporate governance, uh, and an openness uh, to examination, which is, mm. which is definitely beneficial yeah. uh, if you want to attract counterparties. OK. Uh, and. Uh, I totally agree what, um, uh, on what you are saying, that when you compare uh, the, the, uh, the level of rating of financial institution, uh, institution compared to the uh, other industry is higher, but still, um, um, for example, Stan Zeze explained that uh, uh, one of the reasons um, why the, the African financial institutions are not uh, requiring um, um, international um, rating is also that they don't need investment in uh, hard currencies. Okay, so that also explains why they, they are not requesting um, um, in, in general some rating. Mahin, has you some uh, additional insights on, on this fact, explaining why uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. we have this tendency? So, so when we, we have very few ratings in Africa. Um, that's for all the rate, international rating agencies. Yeah. For example, we have uh, around 40 financial institu institutions rated uh, yeah. in, in the continent. And you compare that with the Middle East, we'll, we'll have 100 easily, 100 plus. Asia, yeah. twice yeah. as much. Latin America, even more. Yeah. So, so the real reason is um, the ratings are low. So uh, issuers say, what's the point of a rating? Uh, why do we need a rating? Um, and the, uh, why do we need an international rating? So typically they will get a national uh, a rating from one of the na local rating agencies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then 
when a business is at a certain level of maturity, they're looking to raise debt funding, uh, external debt funding, they'll come to a, an international rating agency. Hmm. Um, and and there's, a, there's a bit of, um, um, there's a bit of an education process. We need to explain what's the value of an international rating. Um, that does open um, a lot of opportunity in terms of raising funding. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a lot of money um, in, in international investors. There's a lot of money looking for good investments in Africa. Um, so, so yeah. So it's an education process. It's a bit of hesitancy on this mm -hmm. uh, from from. Um, African uh, f FIs, uh, they, they are concerned whether we understand the business mm -hmm. model, we, whether we understand the country yeah. risks, uh, whether we look at these institutions through the eyes of an of a, of a, of a international, you know, a developed mm. kind of um, market perspective. Um, so yeah, there's, there's various questions, but, but interestingly we're seeing our ratings coverage increase every year. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've been covering Africa for 10 years now, and you know the coverage has increased, uh, doubled uh, in that period. And um, okay. it's not just issuers, but we're rating more debt securities and so on and so forth. Okay. So I stay with you, and um, um, uh, only few major commercial banks has, uh, even w w when they are rated, has uh, investment grade rating. Okay. Uh, so, does the situation really reflect the credit worthiness of the uh, uh, of, of, of the financial institution? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is <laughs> talking about the sovereign ceiling, <laughs> sovereign cap. So, so when we assess um, a bank, mm -hmm. uh, the operating environment plays a plays a major role in that assessment. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Ultimately, your, uh, if you're a bank, your risk profile is conditioned by where you operate in. Mm -hmm. So sovereign ratings are very low in Africa. Oh. And uh, the banks would typically have a large proportion of their business generated in, in a single country. They will be exposed to uh, large volumes of government securities. They need to hold for liquidity purposes and for revenue generating purposes. Mm -hmm. They'll be exposed to the sovereign and sovereign owned enterprises. Mm -hmm. So they would have a, an outsized exposure to sovereigns. So it's very difficult for a rating, uh, a bank to be rated above the sovereign. I mean, I mean, when you think about it, what's a better credit risk? Is, is it the sovereign or a bank? Mm. So um, we have no investment grade ratings, uh, bank ratings in Africa. Mm. Um, th when we look at our ratings distribution, the majority of ratings are in the single B level and that's a highly mm. speculative yeah. um, rating mm. and we have uh, banks rated in South Africa, Morocco, Namibia uh, at the double B level but mm -hmm. there's absolutely there's no, no um, investment grade ratings. William do you have any additional insight? Yeah about this because the whole problem as you say is the, the sovereign, sovereign ceiling, the sovereign cap uh, two, just two remarks. And the first one is when we looked into the um, methodology that you're using to assess the government uh, or the, so the, the sovereign rating, we noticed that the country, like the sub Saharan, like the West, the CFA countries, to make it simple, for instance, if you look at Cote d'Ivoire, for instance, you see that even if they have a gro growth, which is quite good, it's been good in the past, you know, the last six, seven years, or oh. ten, to ten years, with low inflation, they still have, uh, sorry, a low rating, not a bad rating, they still have a low <laughs> rating, <laughs> just because they are poor. Mm. I mean, the, the, the thing which struck me really is that the, the, the GDP per inhabitant is, is, a, is, is an indicator which mm. is really weighting a lot, you know, in the final note, which is mm. may, may, maybe a bit, a bit unfair or, I mean, I mean, maybe, I mean, this is, this is the first remark. So when, when, when we do our own analysis, financial institution in this type of country, which is with a low rating, the, we tend to do the, the same, I mean, we do the same analysis for the bank itself, the balance sheet of the bank, the intrinsic, you know, uh, the, the rating is okay. Ah, uh, you can't hear, whoa. So yes, the intrinsic, um, the balance sheet, when you look at the balance, when we look at the balance sheet of the bank, we do the same sort of analysis as, as yours. 
But when we, when we go to the, um, the, 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 the sovereign, the environment where they are in, we tend to tr try to do, to do this a little bit differently. And, and for me, w w one of the most important thing uh, to invest or not in a bank in a country is the central bank system, the central bank. If the central bank is a good central bank, then we tend to uh, we, we look at the investment. If the central bank is 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 is, is not to I mean we, we don't like it. We we are not investing yeah. at all. It's a, a zero one because the the and, and the the central bank. We look at the independence of the central bank and we look at, at there's an indicator that I like very much is the difference between the official uh, foreign exchange rate of the country and the. In the, I mean, in, in the street, yeah. I mean, the gray, the gray market of this, uh, of the, uh, when you look at the CFA, for instance, you have, you don't have a gray market. I mean, yeah. it's all official. When oh. you go to Nigeria, it's different, yeah. so it gives you an indication. So the, the um, so that would be the, um, yeah, the, 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 the sovereign ceiling, uh, I'm afraid, um, is, um, is a little bit too, I mean, yeah. So the, that's the, the remark I wanted to make. Okay, I think this is quite interesting, and um, uh, also um, in, in, in the same uh, d direction of your, your, your thought. Um, when the, uh, the, the, the methodology that we are using um, also, uh, I think uh, is also linked to the fact that the, this um, rating is based on uh, the ability of uh, the financial, African financial institution to repay a debt in a hard currency. So, if the the the, the, the methodology were, were, was to, to to assess whether they will be, they will be ha able to, uh, to 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 be solvent in local currency, it also will be uh, different. I think the the impact of the currency in which you we are or you evaluate the, uh, the 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 solvency of the financial institution also is important. What is your point of view yeah, on that? Yeah, no, I just want to add, so, yeah, I mean, same thing. Or, or, uh. Uh, I mean, well, when you look at the history, I mean, it's, it's true that, what, what's, what is the political risk? That's another question I always have. I mean, when you say, yeah, there's a political risk, what, what is it, this political mm. risk? When the, look, look at what happened in Côte d'Ivoire or in Mali, when mm. the, the government was, it was a chaos. I mean, the government, there was no government at all anymore. I mean, it was mm. a, a total chaos for months. But finance that the banks continue to work perfectly well, and 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 when you look at the history of default of yeah. banks in these rich in this region, I mean, it's very good. I mean, yeah. there there's very 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 few default actually. Yeah. So that's uh, another element to take into consideration, I guess. Yes. So I, I, I stay with you. So finally, <laughs> as this international rating which is a precondition for assessing international capital market, hindered or promoted international investment in African financial institutions? Okay, I think the answer is quite obvious. I mean, it didn't do anything because there's, I mean, again, let's, I mean, I think the regions, if you talk about North Africa or South Africa or Central and West Africa or Eastern, I mean, the, 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 the answer might be really different. Mm -hmm. For us, the problem we had is that when we talk to investors in Europe, the first thing, thing they say is, what's the rating? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> there are no rating, yeah. or when there's a rating, it's low. And, and so it's, it's a problem because they don't just go, they, they, a very few invest institutional investors go through that. Mm -hmm. They need a rating. Yeah. We, we say, yeah, but they have a national rating. They don't care, yeah. okay? And, and because they have these big institutions that we talk to, they have that sort of grade of investment. I mean, they can't just, Think. I mean, they just have to do what it's written in their in their mm -hmm. procedures. So that's the, the, the that, that's that's it's it's a real problem not for for these banks not to have um, uh, a re an international national rating. W one of the things we are going we want to do is to promote the rating we, because it's very good for a bank to get an international rating or to go through the process of an internal rating anyway because it's a sort of audit you know of the whole thing or the whole chain and uh, so. This is something we, we would really like to promote, but of course today, I mean, the answer is it, it there's you know it's it doesn't help. <laughs> when you get a B minus at the end of a long process and you pay for that, I mean they're not really yeah. happy anyway. I mean, 
David. Well, I, I would I would definitely disagree with the conclusion, <laughs> um, but I totally agree with your sentiment. Really, right? I mean, I think that the the, the idea that the, the rating is a good process and that it's going to help is definitely true. Um, there are many uh, many companies, if not all of them, would say, would 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 say to uh, any of us who work in rating agencies mm. that the process of going through the rating is extremely beneficial for internal. Uh, controls, internal mm. governance, mm. Um, as well as the external benefits. Uh, you know, people will use the rating process in a way of, of, of uh, applying discipline. The CFO will often use that as a way of applying discipline internally mm -hmm. to, to sometimes uh, counter over-enthusiastic uh, chief execs, yeah. right? let's put it that way. Um, uh, and so the rating process is extremely uh, beneficial in that respect. Mm. And, but I think you also need to look beyond the rating, right? I mean, the rating is the, the superficial outcome in a way, right? I, I don't mean it's superficial process, but it's the, it's the visible right. part right. of, of, of what's, what's going on. And there is so much more that's going on uh, in, in like an iceberg beneath the water, um, and both internally and externally. And mm -hmm. I can say that in, in, in Africa, we've had examples where banks have been um, encouraged by, by William and, 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 and his peers to get a rating. Mm -hmm. um, they've done it willingly and enthusiastically. They've, they have had a low rating outcome, mm -hmm. and yet they've been surprised by the positive reception of that rating, and mm -hmm. particularly the rating research associated with it, um, with their counterparties. So it's not just capital market activity, but, but you know, mm -hmm. general uh, uh, you know, banking relationships, bilateral relationships, and so on where a lot of questions get answered mm. by the rating reports mm. that are produced by the rating agencies. So, so you know, these, these things, that they are more difficult mm. uh, to um, be, be tangible until you've done it. So mm. it's, it's where sometimes once you've done it, you've got a rating, the research is published, you then know. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I, uh, but I, I would like to say that uh, it, is, it, is, it would not be true to say that it's the cost of doing it that is that is the prohibitor, right? Um, clearly, the local rating agencies uh, have very cost-effective solutions. The major international rating agencies are generally uh, much more flexible in Africa than they are elsewhere. So I don't think that it's a cost barrier. It's, it's, it's almost like a, a, a mental block because, as you say, William, uh, you know, people are going through this thought process. If I'm going to get a very low rating, mm -hmm. why should I bother? Um, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and we will, or, you know, uh, uh, Collectively, as, a, as, a, as an industry, radio industry, explain to people that that, that conclusion is the wrong conclusion, mm. even if the thought process is completely logical and understandable. Yeah, and uh, I have um, an interesting uh, insight from, from from Stan, going in your direction. Also, I say that uh, uh, the, the this international rating has not necessarily uh, has been. Uh, 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 a burden for, 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 for borrowing capital. Uh, because he said, for example, uh, we have seen lately African countries with low <laughs> international rating, he, 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 he has written bad. Uh, <laughs> 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 so with low international rating, uh, so a big category, so high risk, uh, and but good local currency um, uh, rating. So moderate risk, and um, and they have uh, we have seen record and high maturity record also. So Africa, the, the tenors of the, the the debt within Africa, and the level of subscription is increasing, despite the fact that we have this um, uh, the, the, this 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 the, the, the fact that they don't have investment grade. So. I think there is a kind of this, this correlation uh, between the two, and uh, that, 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 that's a very interesting uh, insight for, um, uh, from, from uh, Stan. The, the next question um, is for, for you, Olivier. Uh, we, uh, hi, uh, we, we see today uh, that we, we have some, uh, sorry, if I'm losing my, Papers, okay. Uh, so uh, we are talking about a lot of regional and local rating. They will think that uh, the should international investor complement their analysis with local rating. For example, yeah. 
For me, I think the answer is definitely yes. Hmm. It's definitely yes because uh, what we are discussing since the beginning of this, of this panel is this uh, is the disruption between uh, the international assessment hmm. of the risk of uh, regional and African players and what has been going on daily. Hmm. Uh, because when you look at the, uh, the market, uh, the financial institution market, banks are not, I mean, closing all over the, con the, the continent. Hmm. So there is business going on. Given that invest international investors has uh, surely to uh, to have a, a regional or a local perspective uh -huh. of uh, the risk assessment of these financial institutions, so that they can have a, I mean, this international view, international uh -huh. view from um, um, our big uh, rating agencies, uh -huh. and also uh, the the assessments of regional, uh, regional rating agencies, uh, which are more aware of how business are going on in our parts of the, this world, so that they can make a, a, good, a good investment decision. This is my thought. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so ob obviously I asked the question to Stan uh, Saniskas, who is the, the founder of uh, a, a local um, uh, one of the first uh, African uh, local uh, agency. We, we have four um, Pan-African uh, yeah. uh, rating agency, and uh, he's saying the same thing to you. It's for, for him, the, the reports provided by these uh, agency are well detailed and much in a much larger range in terms of economic and financial analysis, okay, compared to the international rating agencies. He's not saying that you're not doing your job. But the, 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 the fact that they are on the ground also uh, allow them to have more, uh, more, 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 more insights. And also, uh, they integrate uh, the, 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 the local currency dimension in, 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 in their uh, assessment. Uh, William, do you have uh, additional? No, uh, uh, yeah, what I want to say is, is when, when you look again at um, because of this ceiling, all, all the banks are rated more or less the same. If you look at Nigeria, they are all, all the banks are B minus. So it's very difficult anyway to have any. Um, you, what you need to do as an investor is to differentiate between banks. You know, I mean, is this bank better than this one? So and you get that through the national uh, rating usually because then you take the this all this ceiling. Uh, out, mm. uh, and so the problem is it's all flattened. I mean, mm. the, 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 in the international rating. So that's why I think it's very important to look at both. I mean, to look at national rating as well. Okay. And in, in the same um, uh, in, in, in the same framework, we also have most of central banks that do not yet recognize uh, the uh, the local regional ratings. For example, for calculation of. Uh, the, the, the the capital the capital ratio, and uh, the cap for the capital ed adequacy calculation, and so um, Olivier, what is the impact of this fact on uh, the financial institutions? Mm. Uh, for me, the the impact is uh, mainly on the, the capacity of these financial institutions to finance mm -hmm. or to doing their job, because uh, I think the the fact for that central banks doesn't recognize these uh, regional or local ratings. Uh, doing that, uh, all, I mean, all the ratios of this institution are going up mm. very quickly because most of the economic players that they finance are not rated also. Mm. So uh, this, the main thing is that the fact you don't recognize this international, or this, sorry, this regional uh, rating is mm. that the business is maybe going slow down because banks and financial institutions can't do more than uh, what is possible uh, in the market just because of this uh, regulation or regulatory aspect of uh, the capacity of finance. Okay. So just to, to, to precise the question, um, in, in, in regulations such as Basel II or Basel III, uh, the central banks, most of African central banks, only recognize uh, rating from uh, the, the four measures, okay, including Fitch rating, 
uh, Moody's and uh, uh, standard, Standards and Poor's. And uh, William, when you, you were talking about the quality of the, the supervision, I think this is one of the uh, uh, I, th I think one of the challenges we are facing because you, you, you have a certain banks that even recognize uh, the, uh, the, 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 the rating of its local um, lo local engines. So I think this can bring some um, uh, so, so, so some difficulties to bank themselves to, 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 to be able to uh, to, to, uh, to optimize the way uh, they, 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 they mitigate the risk and uh, put uh, capital uh, be, be, um, uh, in, in front of this uh, uh, or of, 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 of the, the different risk. And uh, the good news is, uh, for example, if you take in Western Africa, uh, the, 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 the central banks, so the BCAO is now changing quite its mind by uh, requesting uh, the local agencies to uh, to comply, so th there is a list of requirements that they have to meet uh, with international standards in order to be able to, uh, to, 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 to provide a rating that will be uh, recognized by the central bank. So, so I think this is a good, uh, a, a good move, but not enough because we have on, only uh, in Western Africa central banks that are doing that. Dr. William, if you have any idea on that. So it's, it's a very good news indeed. The bad news is usually that the to move the central bank's rules, it's even more difficult than to change the rating agency's rules. So yeah. <laughs> let's see. Now it's it's of course in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, I think we will have the final question and have also the opportunity for the panel to effort for the, the public to interact. Uh, all of these is a question of methodology. Okay. So. Uh, is there anything that we can change or enhance in uh, the methodology in order to, 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 to help or to, 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 to help the financial institution, African financial institution to have international rating that are more uh, helping them to promote investment? Mahin, you have some... Um. Very difficult question. Uh, yes, it's a very <laughs> difficult question, and, and we certainly can't advise. Oh. But um, it's important to note is that we have a single framework, oh. be it for developed market banks or for emerging market banks of Africa. There's one single framework. That's the oh. same at Moody's. That's the same at S and P. And uh, so, um, so, and that works. That framework works. It's based on fundamental credit analysis, mm -hmm. ultimately. Uh, the, the, I think one of the, if I may criticise myself, one of the uh, um, perhaps more difficult, um, more, more, more uh, aspects of that framework is that the operating environment assessment. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the operating environment, is we just don't. Uh, it's not just looking at the sovereign rating, but we look at other country risks. Um, we look at uh, intervention, mm -hmm. uh, regulatory intervention, uh, capital, uh, not so much capital controls, but um, intervention in, it could be through uh, setting interest rate uh, uh, lim caps or whatever. So there's a lot of intervention and we're seeing that um, in the post-COVID world as well. Uh, so those risks are unique to Africa in a way. Um, so I think, I think rating agencies are very concerned about sovereign defaults and sovereign mm -hmm. defaults, you see that in uh, low rated sovereigns mm. uh, and what implications that has on, on banks. So, um, and um, William raised some examples that a sovereign default does not necessarily trigger a bank default and mm. more recently we've seen that in Zambia mm. uh, where you know, the banks continue to function. Mm. Um, so I think um, from our side we do need to understand um, sovereign um, risks uh, a bit better, um, certainly mm. understand um, defaults, sovereign defaults and what that mm. means for the financial uh, uh, financial sector. Um, so uh, I think that, that, that that's all I can say on that point. Yeah. Uh, and, and Stan has the same um, uh, idea that uh, Don has you. He said that the, the analytic, analytical methodology as such does not need to change uh, for Africa because you need, we need to have an international and, and standardized approach. Um, but, uh, however, he, he proposed that the approach used by your, uh, 
the international uh, rating agencies must be clarified for the international investor to understand clearly that the rating establishes the, um, the capacity of borrower to reimburse in hard currency. So you have to integrate this currency dimension in uh, wh when, when you, uh, you, 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 you are assessing um, the solvency of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the financial institution. So this rating does not define the true credit quality of all bor borrowers, as you say, because you, you, you have also the influence of the sovereign um, rating. And the, 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 the investor must request to, to, to a kind of uh, complementarity between the local, uh, 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 the rating from local agency, and also have uh, integrating the international standard through uh, your, uh, uh, your, your um, the rating made by uh, international uh, investor. Um, Olivier, um, what is your, 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 your opinion on, on this, um, uh, well, this methodology? I think, as you said, and as Stan is, uh, said, the matter, the matter is not uh, about the methodology. For me, uh, going into an, an international rating process or uh, taking into account a local uh, or national um, rating, mm -hmm. it's about uh, trust and confidence. You see, so uh, maybe the, 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 the solution could be in for our uh, regional agencies to more communicate on their approach, more uh, educate, mm. educate both uh, regional, local investors and international investors on, uh, I mean, the importance of having confidence or trust, mm. the impact of uh, ratings and also, this school, this school makes things going better for me. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah, add just if I, if I, 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 I'm not going to make a comment on the methodology <laughs> per se. Okay, that's not my job. But what I will do is just say, when I've met with central bank governors, mm -hmm. um, in my role as a commercial person trying to build the number of ratings in Africa, it's very clear central bank governors understand the power of the rating process, right, both internally within the uh, entity and to the external market. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're not saying is, oh, you should change your methodology to make it more flexible, mm -hmm. more easier, whatever. No, no, on the contrary, right, they actually quite like the discipline and the, of, of the process. Mm -hmm. And um, really, all we can do is, everybody, please, encourage people to be open to the rating process um, it doesn't have to be with Moody's, uh, you know, it can be with other rating agencies. Local rating agencies are very complementary mm -hmm. to the work that, that, that we do. Uh, it's yeah. fine, no problem. Um, and if anybody would like, well, there were some references made earlier to uh, rates of default in emerging markets. Mm. Uh, we've actually got a very interesting uh, uh, piece of research mm -hmm. that I can send to anybody that would like to, to receive it. Uh, an emerging market default study, which complements our developed market default study. Mm. And uh, maybe not surprising to the people in this panel and in this room, uh, actually the default rates in emerging markets were uh, extremely good, uh, uh, and in some cases higher than in developed markets. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, a, a better recovery. So um, what I'm saying, the rating might be low, right? But people right. look at the default rate, and if the default rate is act, in, in actual practice is not so bad, right, then they're happy to, to invest. And the rating research pro, uh, reports unlock the differentiation questions that people have, even right. when you've got a lot of ratings in, a, in the system, like Nigeria, completely right, a right? uh, lot of ratings uh, at the same level. Um, you have to look beyond that, and our research is designed to, to, to do that. And that's, that's why we want more people. The, the more, more entities in a system mm -hmm. that are rated, the better it is for comparative pro processes, mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously more opinions about in the public domain. More opinions yeah. in the public domain, whoever they're from, is beneficial to the uh, economy. Yeah. And, we need to, and we need to educate the uh, international investors, I mean, the in, institutional investors, because when yeah. they look, they look mm. at the rating, okay, but, but mm. they, have, they have to look, read the analysis and, yeah. and understand why the rating is low. It's, and, mm. and this is something we would like to absolutely to, to, to do. 
But thank you very much. The, the debate is passionate. We have one minute left, so maybe I have uh, uh, some question from the participant. Okay. Oh, there are questions. Okay. <laughs> My name is Ade Brimo. I run an investment bank in Nigeria. I just want to corroborate the comments of uh, the panelists. Mm -hmm. The truth is, rating is not a discouragement. It's actually promoting um, international interest in our business. Uh, we operated for 10 years, and we were recently rated by Augusto & Co., mm -hmm. a local rating agency in Nigeria, and we're proudly rated triple B minus with stable investment uh, outlook. I was talking to somebody yesterday. The moment I mentioned that, the interest just grew. And along the line, I went to the stand of uh, one of the rating agencies here, the uh, fish rating. And the young man there said, why are you going to, why are you interested in fish rating, international rating again? I said, we wanted additional investor confidence. The truth is, any business that really want to go international, you need the rating agency. Start locally, then the foreign uh, international rating agencies will be interested in you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Other question? Okay. Sure. Um, I'll just be a quick one here. Um, my name is Samir. I'm from Stonex Financial. Um, I just, do you think there's a place for um, a well-recognized compliance rating scheme? Because that's a big factor in people's decisions, especially international investors, when looking, you know, uh, you know, across oceans, another part of the world, developing frontier markets, stuff like that. That's that's quite a key concern. Okay. Take the um, yeah, so, so our framework does cover governance, um, corporate governance, that kind of thing. Uh, but there are other agencies that provide uh, sort of compliance kind of ratings. And um, I, can, I can possibly give you some names because we do look at their analysis from a third party perspective sometimes. One last question. Thank you. So my name is um, Abayomi. I work with Crystal Capital in Lagos, Nigeria, and I just want to corroborate what Adi just said and um, ask a question. I think it will be directed to Sahi, Mahin, right? So um, is there like a global standard that probably regulates all the rating agents globally, you know, such that the local rating agents would probably be on the same or at the same scale with the international one. Because it takes a lot for a company in Nigeria, for example, to go through the process of getting rated locally, and now they're trying to attract investments internationally. You want them to also go through that process. That's the first question. And if there's a global standard, you know, I believe in terms of the methodologies, everything will go in line. And secondly, if, if, if that doesn't work, is there a way the international rating agents are working to align or form alliances with the local rating agents whereby you know you guys are able to work together and work on the same pedestal that way the rating agencies would actually have the same standards and work together thirdly sorry if that's not the case <laughs> would there be a way where <laughs> yeah, sorry would there be a way where by um, the international um, agencies would have like a local office in the countries different countries you know, a good example is the Diliot International. They are in countries like in Nigeria, and they work locally with the companies there, you know. So if you want to probably get rated, you could actually approach them and, you know, work locally. That way, you know, you can actually be in local countries, different countries, and then afford them the opportunity to get rated yeah. through you guys. Yeah, that's uh, my question. I'll, qui I'll quickly start. Um, <laughs> so, so Fitch ratings like Moody's and SME, we have offices around the world. Um, and um, so, so on the commercial side, I think David is better placed to answer some of the questions around regulations. And uh, if that's okay. Sure. No. I mean, I, interesting question. I mean, the 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 question around um, 
local alliances with local agencies and, and international agencies. We do have affiliates in, in uh, lots of countries. Actually, in Africa, we, we only have one in, in Egypt. We don't have uh, affi an affiliation with anybody else. But most, most of the, the big three agencies do have local operations in a number of places. Um, so, um, but just not, not in Africa currently. Uh, the question about um, uh, standardizing of methodologies, what I would say is that we have a, all have a similar approach in terms of discipline, uh, but we, we, in order, because we have our own opinions, we need to have our own method of getting to our opinions. Mm -hmm. So we're never going to have the same methodology. Mm -hmm. However, we do publish our methodologies, and very often the local rating agencies adopt elements mm. of a Moody's approach or a Fitch approach or an S&P approach or maybe a bit of everything, right? So I would say that th the opportunity there for people to adopt the same standard mm. is available. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting uh, panel. The takeaways are uh, we need to converge between international and local rating. Uh, we also talk about education. Um, as a consultant, for example, we are promoting also the rating advisory for investors, for financial institutions, for different partners, that also will help understanding what is behind uh, the rating. It will also help the, uh, the, the rating agency to better understand the, uh, the, 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 real, the realities of financial, um, African financial institutions. So thank you very much and keep in touch.